candidates. I am here with one of our candidates for the upcoming mayoral race, uh, Mr. Anderson Fernandez. Um, so let's talk about the water crisis. Okay. Um, there is a, a lot of uncertainty still surrounding the water quality in the city. You know, the EPA, uh, the governor's office, Mark Edwards, um, are all kind of saying that the water is back to, I think some of the language I heard was pre-event levels. Uh, so there, there's, there's an effort to shut down the pods and to get oh, the city wow. back to filtered use. Now, obviously, that's uh, very contentious and, oh, and not a popular move among a lot of the residents here. I guess, um, first, I would, I, a two-part question. Okay. Number one is, where do you think the city's at in terms of its water quality? And number two, as mayor... How would you help provide guidance to residents that are struggling to know what information to trust, you know, between what their neighbors are saying, what maybe some activists, citizen scientists are saying, medical professionals, professors, regular, you know, people are having trouble making sense of all of the information that's out there. Uh, so don't drink it. Don't drink it. Okay. Literally. Do not drink it. With a filter? Don't drink it. Okay. I'm saying, listen to what was just said, Curtis. Mm-hmm. Now, before I lived in, I lived in Flint before the water crisis. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to use a filter to drink the water. Mm -hmm. No one said to me that um, in order to drink Flint's water, you got to use a filter. Mm -hmm. um, to bathe in it, you need to use a filter. No one said that to me. Mm -hmm. So now if someone comes to me today and says, well, you can drink it. It's safe to drink if you use a filter. That concerns me. So that lets me know the water isn't back good. to normal. Because before the water crisis, no one was saying anything about a filter. Right. Okay. And if you just think about a filter, mm -hmm. all filters aren't built the same. Because we know this. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that, well, I know from our research that what are the filters filtering? Mm -hmm. Okay, we say lead. Mm -hmm. They filter Metal. lead. They yeah. fill lead. They filter lead. Mm -hmm. What else is in the water? Um, we don't know. Oh. I'm saying because if you say, yeah, without having the actual documents in front of you, because having no one came out and said, well, this is in the water, lead is in the water, but this, 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 this is in the water. So that's your concern. Yeah. They're saying, well, the lead levels are down. The lead levels are within regulatory levels right uh, whether that is which even those aren't necessarily health stand aren't health standard yes. but anyway so okay let's say with the filter you're at zero lead in your water but you're saying well even if that's true you're concerned about some of the other things correct in the water. correct and that's my approach mm -hmm. and dealing with the water situation mm -hmm. um because it's tragic mm -hmm. in a sense to where we're not even talking about just water but the emotional Right. distress that it causes. Right. And the change of, we'll say, I hate to use the word normal, we don't put quotes around normal, mm -hmm. normal lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You go out the city, go to Chicago. Mm -hmm. You can just jump in the water, do whatever, do whatever. Mm -hmm. Go to Flint, and I got to think about what I got to do. From what right. I cook to what I bathe. And right. every walk of life. Yeah, it's it's one stress a uh, stressor among many in this environment. Right? Yes, yes, um, yes, 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 and that's a narrative that's not to me. I haven't heard that narrative enough because when you put that in the context, you got the stressors. Mm -hmm. So, and then you have other stressors that go along with that. Then that puts some of the things that's happening here in right. context. If. So have you been have you been unhappy with the leadership around the water crisis recovery? Let's say uh, just at the city, you know, at the city level, among city council and mayors, have you been frustrated with how things have been handled? Because you know, like you've been saying, a lot a lot of the city is, is strapped for re uh, for revenue, uh, right? For various reasons we've been okay. talking about, uh, and now the state is pulling out some of their resources. They're still invested, but less and less, you correct, know, as time correct, goes on. Correct. Um so I mean, where does this leave the people who feel like support is still needed, they're stressed out about their water, 
as mayor, what what would you do? What actions would you take? Well, I gotta start right now mm-hmm. because if I wasn't in this lawsuit, because this lawsuit is ugly. Mm-hmm. I mean, because it's talking and about just just to clarify, you're talking about the lawsuit between the the DEQ, the MDEQ, and the city of Flint. Yes. Okay. Because I don't care who mayor. If this suit isn't squashed, meaning what I've said in the suit is basically this, that um, let's look at this because we, ta- we can't say what a person's mind is or what their mindset is. We can just look at the results of their actions. Mm-hmm. So we see the emergency managers being criminals, mm-hmm. literally, in the criminal system. Mm-hmm. So these are the men and women who orchestrated these contracts, made the decisions. Going back to the Karagandi, you mean? Even, well, we'll stop right there because we can go back farther. But, right. um, and the switch to sell the pipeline. Mm-hmm. The, so, um, right. okay. now, all of those contracts are fraudulent by law. Because if they're entered into, first of all, two things I said. We were on involuntary slavery. Right. Servitude. Mm -hmm. Servitude. And I'm saying that those contracts were invalid. And that's what I have before the Judge um, David Lawson. Okay. So if those contracts are fraudulent, wrought or done by those who are being criminal charges, misconduct to do it, derelict to do it, all these other charges, which say that their mindset wasn't to help Flint. And then we see in the documents, and then if you pull up the um, stuff that I've put in, you will see documents and facts which I've said that state that the Snyder himself said that the Genesee Commission was a force behind, was the initial force and a strong force behind the KW, mm-hmm. along with the trades. Mm-hmm. So now if we look and see who's benefiting now. Right, so money. you're talking about basically the way that emergency managers came in, orchestrated a, a pipeline plan that was to the advantage of people that were not Flint stones themselves, basically, and that this was criminal, be- criminal. You know, some of the behavior in getting to that point of selling the pipeline, of switching to the pipeline, was criminal. Um, and um, I think you're also suggesting that the, the emergency management law, in and of itself, is a criminal law. It's unconstitutional. So literally, all of these, yeah. <laughs> that's not only suggesting it's. In so the since court. since we're kind of on the topic of of pipelines and water sources, were you are you supportive of the plan that Mayor Weaver came out with the the thirty year Gliwa contract? I mean, how did you feel when you heard about that, and what are your thoughts? Because there's been you know it's it's this unsettled debate between her and the city council right now. See. Again, I'm coming from a legal perspective, mm-hmm. so that's what I'm basing this on, the okay. stuff that I have okay. put in the court system. Because, again, the fight is now, mm-hmm. not once you get in, because mm-hmm. then stuff is already done. So that being said, when I read the documents and the way it's all put together, think of it this way. You just bought a car. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, put all your money in there. And you find out it's a lemon. But you done went past the days to where you can turn it in as a lemon. Mm-hmm. You stuck with this car. You paying mm-hmm. high insurance, bills on top of bills. So whatever you decide, if you decide to sell it, mm-hmm. if you decide to keep it and put money into it, mm-hmm. that's just not a good situation to be in. Mm-hmm. And so what I'm saying is, it's just not a good situation to be in because there's more that's going on, as I've said earlier, than uh, just a contract. Because once, Curtis, if you just take a chance to read it, I mean, you first of all, you might throw up when you read it. The the Gliwa contract? No, no, when you read the um, 
what the Michigan Department of oh, the Environment yeah. put in. I mean, what they actually wrote. I think I did read it when it first came out, some of it, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying this, when you read it, it's just terrible. Yeah. So, um, basically, I'm starting now to do my platform is to improve the quality of life here okay. and to lower the cost of living in Flint. And this lawsuit is just an example of what I'm doing now to make sure that happens because if things keep on going the way they are, mm -hmm. we're going to have pay high, be taxed with the $85 million bond. Right. Okay. Who got to pay that bond? Yeah. So uh, we're almost out of time, okay. but you got about one minute here. And what I want you to do is don't talk to me. Talk straight to the camera in front of you. Okay. You're going to give the people just a 60-second a, a pitch as to why uh, come November 7th you should be mayor of the city of Flint. The reason that I should be voted in as mayor of Flint is because I'm starting now to do the things in court to remove the burdens of the $85 million bond and to fight the fight that's been said in the streets that the emergency manager system violated our rights. And so now I'm showing today the things that need to be done in the future that will bring about a better quality of life here and then a thing to where we have lower cost of living because if this suit is unchallenged and remain the same, that $85 million bond is going to bring up those water bills. Mm -hmm. And see, you can come visit me at www.votefornandersonfernandes.com and then you can read more about my plan. All right. Well, um... Thank you for being here today, uh, Mr. Fernandez. It was really great talking with you. It was with you too, yeah. Chris. I like your insight that you yeah. have on the issues. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that is it for today on Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Curtis Pamilia, and we will be back with uh, more candidates for the upcoming mayoral and city council races. Again, if you want to learn more about uh, Mr. Fernandez, you go to www. Anderson Fernandez, vote. Vote, vote for, vote for Anders, www .com. Um, uh com. That is it for today, but stay tuned and we'll be back with more interviews. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Cuando estaba en crianza temporal, nunca sabía cuándo me iba a tener que mudar, así que siempre tenía mi maleta lista. Y un día, me adoptaron. Mis nuevos padres me abrieron sus corazones y su hogar. Ellos me cocinan mi desayuno favorito todas las mañanas. Mis padres me llevan a viajes que jamás pensé podría ir. Me dieron un hogar y una mejor excusa para usar esa maleta. Mis padres no son perfectos, pero son perfectos para mí. Todos tenemos un sueño. El mío era ver el océano. Y con un poco de ayuda, lo logré. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. 
should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans, because love has no labels. Good evening, and welcome to Meet the Candidates. Uh, my name is Curtis Pamilia, and I will be your host for today. And I am here with a Mr. Anderson Fernandez. Fernandez, sorry. Uh, Longtime Flint resident and one of our 17 uh, mayoral candidates for the upcoming 2017 recall election. Mr. Fernandez, thank you for being here with us today. Oh, not a pleasure. Not a problem. My pleasure, <laughs> yeah. Curtis. Um, so you're a longtime Flint resident, so why don't you um, just talk a little bit about your history in Flint and why you've decided to run this November? Oh, my history in Flint is I've been here since I was born and raised mm -hmm. here. And I uh, graduated in 86 at Flint Northwestern, as I was telling you, Curtis, during my illustrious baseball career. <laughs> with, <laughs> we had a 74-game losing streak, and it was my hit that broke that streak. Mm -hmm. And then I'll segue in into the um, history of Flint, which I know it. We have been through the industrial, our own industrial revolution. And from that revolution, there was never a modernization of the city. Uh, I'll just leave it there. was never a modernization of the city. Mm -hmm. And from that, we didn't grow as we should have as far as getting new industries in, mm -hmm. outside of just relying on just one industry. Right. And the reason that I wanted to run for mayor is basically because of a conversation that I was having with some elders of Flint and then some of the uh, my neighbors. And then there was a consensus of ideas in which I could champion, and one being that the narrative that's on Flint is a negative never narrative. Right. And that negative narrative isn't warranted because we are not a city of people who don't want to work or lazy. We're not living in a drug-infested area. That kind of narrative, yeah. Yes, yes, and that we're all just heartbroken because, and we can't do nothing because the shop is left. Right, And interesting, yeah. We just have a rich, a rich um, culture here. Mm-hmm. If we just look back from just our brief history of looking back at the city and that was done at City Hall and all the things that came about that, those same type of strengths still reside in our men and women and children that live here. It's just that that message isn't going out. It's a disconnect. And through my quote-unquote campaign. <laughs> right. I've got a chance to meet with uh, different fact, different wards and uh, different uh, businesses. And then what I'm seeing is it's a dumping on of this is the problem. That's the problem. Say a little bit about that last point, a dumping on of this is, this is the problem. Okay, so for example... Mm -hmm. We'll say it's, it's a negative narrative that city council is dysfunctional. Right, right. Um, me being from my background of a counselor, mm -hmm. I've observed them and found out that it's more than... That's taken out of context because if we look at all the stressors that's on this council through all this time that we've been on the emergency manager. Right, cuts from state revenues. Ooh, we just, yeah. Yeah, we can just go on and on and on. Deindustrialization. I mean, we could list probably a whole host of things. Correct, yep. Curtis. Correct, yep. Curtis. So that ne negative narrative isn't true to what I saw as the nature of the uh, council, the current council, right, which was one that when I was there, I saw that two people came that interest me. One young man said that in his neighborhood, a lady was some two teenagers were killed by someone, and then hit by a car. Another man said in our neighborhood, which is a different neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened. The city council responded and said, 
we will look into this and put this on the special committee to deal with this right here because it's a problem. Right. It wasn't no debating. Right. It was a consensus. So I believe I that the nature of is to help the citizens. And can you imagine not being able to do that and have the power stripped away from you? Yep. And the type of mentality. And then again, I met with the, the meet, but I was with the school board meeting. And then the questions that were asked were challenging questions. But yet they didn't attack the people who were asking intelligent, the asking them questions, asking yeah, them yeah, questions yeah, yeah. that were challenging. Mm -hmm. And what I saw from that, I can see our Flint school system as an educational asset mm -hmm. to lead other schools to um, help our children become the best that they can be within the context of being their best. Mm -hmm. And the negative is, is that the Flint schools ain't doing nothing. And then we look at the police department. They not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. When you look at the context of what's going on, the emergency manager, and it's in writing if you just look through the different things. Right. So um, they cut the police force. Mm -hmm. So if you cut officers, it's not a, it's not a thing of not wanting to do thing of not having the manpower to do. And then it and then it legitimizes the whole narrative of emergency management is, oh, look at this dysfunctional government. And you're Ooh, saying, well, how did it get this way? Correct. It's not because the Flint people don't know how to run their own government or don't want to work correct. or anything like that. Correct. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curtis, man, you're right on that. <laughs> I like that. Um, another thing I was thinking about while you were talking is the, the moratoriums that the city council passed on the liens, the water liens, uh, back a couple months ago. But, of course, once it got up the chain of command, the receivership transition advisory board, RTAB, struck it down. So those are the, Literally. These, are the kind of, these are the kinds of things you're locating is you see the state's interference in the city to be one of the main issues. Uh, yes, yes. And then so because of my legal background, and what is that? I just give That's, um, basically, I fought since we we'll say, oh, no, nah, just through the system, mm -hmm. just fighting different, different lawsuits. And from that, I've gained a strong knowledge of the law. Mm -hmm. And so when I read the um, suit that was, um, let me see, it's Michigan Department of Environmental Quality versus the City of Flint. The suit that they came out with around the water source switch? Yes. Okay. And I'm very in tune to what people write mm -hmm. because I'm learning better how to read mm -hmm. at this age because sometimes we get caught in um, definitions that aren't the true definitions of the word. Mm -hmm. They're just connotative. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you sometimes get lost. So... The point that I wanted to make is I entered into that suit as an activist brief to say that, look at what you're saying. You're suing the city. Mm -hmm. But who is in control or who has to approve? It's the RTAB board. Because mm -hmm. we're not dealing with no little bit of money. <laughs> right. Yeah. So the RTAB board and the treasurer, if I'm not mistaken, of Michigan has to approve it. So why aren't they being sued in court? Right. It has like, to approve the new water plan. Ultimately. Yeah. The, City council passes a vote, but then RTAB gets the final say anyways. Right. So okay. why is it? Thanks, Curtis. Yeah. Okay. So why yeah. is it that they're not? And so that's the point that I brought up. And yeah, also, that's interesting. I actually hadn't thought I hadn't thought of that till you just brought it up. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then also I said that based upon the language of the documents that forced us to be onto emergency management. Mm -hmm. Because remember, um, I think it's 2012, we said, no, we the can't have them. Right. Yeah, it was yep. shut, knocked down, then Snyder went back and uh, everybody Passed approved it. Passed it in a lame duck session and then made go. it uh, <laughs> un, uh, unrepealable. Right, That's right, word, right, yeah. right, right, right. Very, very good, Chris. Yeah. And so with that, I looked at that through how it's being ran, mm -hmm. as putting Flint under involuntary slavery, mm -hmm. servitude. Mm -hmm. 
Because, and we know that, uh, I don't say, want to say we, but if we look at the Constitution of Michigan, we know that involuntary servitude is a no-no. It's, non, it's unconstitutional. Literally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's my argument. And there are these ongoing constitutional cases against the emergency manager law, but they're always pending and they're always being put on hold. Uh, one thing I did want to ask you, so you're running in a recall election. Correct. Have you been, because I know Mayor Weaver has been a very vocal critic of the emergency management law, at least in my reading of the statement she's made. Uh-huh. Uh, have you been um, unhappy with the way she has worked with the state government or opposed the law or anything like that? No, it's not a matter of being unhappy. Mm-hmm. In terms of this recall, it was put before us because of the reason. Uh, yeah. No, the... because the citizens uh. signed for it. Right. So they wanted it. So so therefore, that's what kind of this race has come about. Mm-hmm. Literally, that's why it's about. Right. You can put whatever narrative you want to okay. with it. But that's what it b- was boiled down mm-hmm. to. So then, so what I'm doing is trying to reach those citizens to find out. But to your question, Curtis, mm-hmm. um, Legal action has to be taken. Mm-hmm. Strong legal action, and in opposition to, to, to the PA four thirty six. Yes, the, and it's like sometimes people play around with it. Mm-hmm. They say they doing stuff. Not saying we're talking now. We're talking beyond just the mayor. Mm-hmm. But they actually, when you read what they put in, you see that. Okay, you letting them off the hook. Like, for example, okay. we was talking about narrative. In this case right here that I just mentioned, they said, the, def- the um, plaintiff said the narrative, and I'm saying this very loosely, that it was Flint's decision mm-hmm. to switch. No, it wasn't Flint. Flint don't have, didn't have the decision-making power to switch. Mm-hmm. It was the... Snyder's, what, emergency managers in our tab, because mm-hmm. they directly report to him. Right. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Yeah, what you're, what you're saying reminds me a little bit, too, of the ways in which, um, you know, they tried to make the switch to the Flint River, kind of about the city council, because they did technically pass a vote, but it was just a symbolic vote, really. All the, the vote was silent. Right. Okay, so if it's... What do you mean, silent? Okay, so when we look at... When we look at what was written mm-hmm. and what's out there, mm-hmm. and even within the stuff that I have put in the court, I've shown them that the the vote was silent, meaning they didn't voice the vote to say, they didn't say strongly, let's go do this. They were silent on the issue from what my documents tell me. Okay. And so being, they was vocal about switching to the KW, but they were silent on moving to the river. the river. Because you're not, you didn't come from here. So uh, you don't have a background here. So mm-hmm. growing up, we knew. You don't go in that river. You don't? No, I, I, I'm you not don't. from here. But I've talked to. <laughs> oh, you have? Okay, okay. I, know, I didn't know. I, I, I have know. a friend who was saying, you know, as a little kid, it was always, Yes! This is, not a, <laughs> this is not a river you jump in and go No, swimming. no, no. So at no time right. would the council, because they would just be, that would just, just be crazy to say, because uh, they know. Okay, well, we are going to have to take a short break here, Okay. Uh, but we'll be back with uh, Mr. Fernandez in a minute, and we're going to talk to him about the water crisis after that, so stay tuned.